There aren't many authors who can claim that whatever they touch will turn to gold, but if Carnby Kim made those claims, I don't think a single person who's read his work will be disagreeing. For the final day 7 of Webtoon Week, where I've made a video about webtoons on every single day for the past 6 days, I hope, I will be talking about the brilliant mastermind behind such works as Illegitimate Child, Home of Sugar, and house of mammals that are dirty. <laughs> that joke was way funnier in my head. I'm sorry. So, um, Karn B. Kim, for those of you who aren't aware, is the author of these stories, which are all honestly incredible and you need to read. As opposed to the usual route the great authors take of making one epic that will define their career and a few other stories here and there, being a thriller writer, Carnaby Kim aims to keep the pace from the very start of the story until the final chapter, extremely quick, extremely high, and keeping you on the edge of your seat for every single chapter you're going to read. That's something I appreciate because honestly, why waste people's time. Thrillers are meant to be thrilling and no one does it as well as he does. From the post-apocalyptic sweet home, which details how people would survive in a world where the apocalypse is way worse than zombies, it's these mutant monster things which no one can deal with, he follows a main character with no will to live at all and makes the entire thing interesting from a different point of view than one might expect. The MC actually scheduled the day he was going to commit suicide before the entire world ended around him anyway, so it becomes a thing of, well, I might as well survive today. Let me see what happens tomorrow, and his evolving mindset as he and the characters around him try to cope with these very unique circumstances is interesting to behold because you never know what to expect out of anyone. Is he going to give up early and give in since he has no will to live? Is he going to form good bonds with the people around him? There isn't much time to figure it out because, as you might expect of an apocalypse, everything is super high-paced from start to finish. And because he isn't trying to tell some overarching story that will be remembered f until the end of days, he allows himself to make the individual moments greater, so Sweet Home's only about a hundred episodes long, and while I'll admit that the final few chapters were not the best in my personal opinion, uh, divorcing himself from trying to tell the story until the death of the characters and ending the story when he feels I've told the part I think will be most interesting is what allows them to make their stories so distinct. This is 100% the type of video which deserves a script, which it's not going to get because I ran out of time and planned this too late like I usually do, so you'll have to deal with my rambling, but I want you to believe me when I say his work is phenomenal. From Sweet Home, which I've already given a very bad description of, to Pig Pen, which I don't believe is as popular because it was a Daily Pass original, those who actually read on Webtoon will understand how this challenged people. The way he begins the story once the action has started and ends the story once the action has left its peak is something that just makes them gripping from the beginning to the end. And I don't mean in media res starts to his stories, those are all too common. I mean, whether the characters inside know what's going on or not, they are involved from the moment it begins. Speaking of pig pen, which is less popular, so I suppose it gives me reason to focus on it. I read this when it first came out, and it follows a guy who shipwrecks, crashes on this one deserted island where he slowly finds out that the family there is not normal. There's a reason they don't live in society. 
kind of not normal. And as the true natures of both parties come to come to light, it becomes clear that there will not be any coexisting and a death game breaks out. And while that on its own should be a good enough premise for the story, the subplot that follows the amnesia of the MC as he slowly uncovers his memories and finds out he is not the kind of guy he was deluded into believing is extremely fascinating because once we know who he is, we're like, oh, this is about to get so, so much better. With his mastery of the fundamental skill that is dramatic character writing, nothing he writes is ever going to miss because as long as you can make characters scared, make characters motivated, and make characters on edge, any situations you devise to throw them together is going to be something gripping, and he manages time and again, as we see in one of his more popular works that is based around a father and son serial killer duo that honestly despise each other but need each other in certain ways. I just think everything he touches is gold and I just wanted to gush about that a bit. This isn't my first video this week that is going to be me saying, oh this is pretty nifty and then doing an awful job of explaining it but it it, it will be my last because it's the last day and uh, I have a very small amount of time to edit these, so uh, goodbye again. Thanks for tuning in to Webtoon Week. If you just got here, check out some of the previous videos. And until next time, this has been Ken Chan begging for forgiveness for seven straight garbage videos.